I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a video on SN1 reactions. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, a professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the author of the Death Destroyer book and the Orgo Man products. What we're going to do is we're going to work a problem and we're going to decide is it an SN1 or an SN2 process. The first thing we want to do is if something is sterically hindered, it can't do an SN2 because an SN2 necessitates me doing a backside attack and attacking an antibonding orbital from the backside. If it's an SN1 reaction, you better be damn sure that you can form a carbocation that's pretty stable. Things that are stable, secondary is reasonably stable, I can live with that. Tertiary is really stable. But if you ever see a primary carbocation or a methyl carbocation, you know it cannot possibly do the SN1 pathway. So let's have a look and we're going to make a decision. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> the first thing I do is I give you a reaction and you get two products. You're going to treat this compound with H2O, a nice polyprotic solvent. <clears throat> and you're going to get two <clears throat> alcohols. And I want to know... Is this SN1 or is this SN2? The first thing I do is I look at this and I see it's primary. Now, the minute you see primary, you think it to yourself, oh, it's going to go SN2. But hold on a second. This primary is very different from a normal primary. That we're going to see that if we can form a very stable carbocation, then it will seek the possible competing reaction, which is SN1. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you that if I let the chlorine leave, you've got a carbocation. Now, you may scoff at this and say, oh, it's a primary, but it's got resonance. And the resonance form, <clears throat> this primary is actually a primary allylic, by the way. And this secondary is a secondary allylic. Both are very stable. And I'm in a polyprotic solvent, which is also the nucleophile. So that's going to mean that this reaction is likely going to take an SN1 path. I've got a lot of things going for me. i got a good solvent. i got a polyprotic solvent, I should say. We've got an excellent carbocation that's got resonance. Now... If you attack this first structure with the water and you pull off at H, that would give product number one. And if you attack this carbocation and pull off at H, you get product two. Now, I'm going to push this a little further. Which do you think would be the major product? The answer would lies in the fact that which one is at the high temp and the low temp. First of all, this carbocation is more stable. <clears throat> it's a secondary allylic. That means that this carbocation is going to form faster. And because it's going to form faster, that means it's under kinetic control, which means that the low temperature would predominate. And at low temp, low temp may be minus 20 degrees Celsius. You would form this as the major and this as the minor over here. If the temperature is higher, though, even though the carbocation was not the most stable, the final product has got a double bond that's the most internalized. And that means that the product would be more stable. So that is what we call the thermodynamic product, and that will occur at higher temperature. I hope this gives you a good idea that many times the temperature plays a very important role in determining the thermodynamic product, and the kinetic product. But in this case, the operating mechanism was an SN1 process. All right, I hope this helps, and I'll see you in study group. Good day to you.